everyone, it's Rita with Everything Homemade and this is the 13th video in the series on how to garden. We have had a lot of new subscribers, so for the new people just watching this video, we have started this whole entire series from the very beginning. So all you need to go is to my home channel, um, Everything Homemade, and click on the folder gardening and you will find all the videos on how we got to this point already. If you are also a new subscriber, you may not know that I am also an author to a new series out called A Heart's Journey. The first book in the series is called Heart's Cry. The second book is coming out this fall. This series is a clean action romance geared to older teens and adults. It's to inspire and entertain you. So it, all the links are in the description box. If you're interested, it's available on Amazon. Let's dive in to gardening now. So in this particular episode, I am gonna go over what your seeds look like when they're sprouted. So it's really easy to sow your seeds, but when you got weeds coming up, what does your red beets look like when they're germinated or your carrots or your beans or your peas or your lettuce all those things so to a new gardener it is a great challenge when you're looking at the ground you're going is that a weed or is that my lettuce is that red beets or is that a weed what what am, what are you looking at so the really so you really need to pay attention if you do not know what they look like to know what they look like and to remember it and it makes it a lot easier so you can go hey my carrots are up those are carrots um, because a lot of the seeds look like weeds especially when everything is germinating so what I'm going to do is go around the entire garden I'm going to show you what everything looks like when it just came out of the ground. Now some things are a little bit further ahead than others, but they're mostly have germinated in the last five days. So you'll see them having their fall sleeves out and, and they're very, very small. So I want to also show you what weeds look like comparis in comparison to the actual plant. At the same time, I will go around all the garden plants that we have planted in and give you a thorough update at the same time. So let's have some fun. Let's stare at the dirt really, really closely and let's find some seeds that germinated. So let's start our tour at the very beginning of the garden. So if you remember, the first thing we did in the garden was get the cucumber tunnel ready. That was the first transplants we did because they needed to get into the ground. So let's take a look at them now. So as you can see, they are about doubled in size. They look absolutely awesome. And there's five hills of them and they are doing terrific. Now, what is awesome about this tunnel is that two days ago, I think it was June, it's June 6th today, so it was June 4th, we had frost overnight. The weather network didn't even call for frost and it didn't even look like it was gonna freeze. I woke up in the morning and the grass was white. It crunched under my feet. Oh, my heart just dropped because I don't, I got a huge garden. I can't just cover everything. So the cucumbers did fine, of course, because they were under plastic. Um, here are the peppers. So the last thing we need to do is, is transplant those into containers. I just haven't done it yet. They're pretty small yet. So within the week, I'll be doing that. So our cucumbers are doing awesome. So let's move on to the marigold row. This was the last thing. These have only been transplanted about four days ago and they're doing pretty good. You can see some, some are blooming and the smaller ones here, they're, they're looking really well. Um, they're still getting adjusted from transplanting, so nothing, you know, miraculous is happening here, but they're really looking good. What my biggest concern with the frost is, is that this side of the garden that you're looking at, right, right here, would, would be okay. And it's crazy because the back of the garden there, 
the back of the garden there will get get hit harder than the front so the more you move north on my property the less chance that it would freeze overnight the more you move this way south and down with the grazing back there the frost get it gets hit harder so it is really crazy how our property works and how the sloping the slight sloping makes a huge difference so that is the marigold now let's go over to the pumpkins take a look these guys have literally almost tripled in size they got new leaves coming right here and, uh, and I actually, I see a flower bud coming here. They are doing wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Now, I've had some really good questions about my pumpkins. I initially planted five seeds. I did not thin them out because all five came up strong. We transplanted them in. We used, the, we, we used them in the yogurt container. Then we flipped out the yogurt container and planted them in. Some people have asked me, well, won't they get root bound won't they get squished um, aren't they too close together my biggest theory is that these guys love friends okay they love to be entangled with other roots the biggest difference is is we don't leave them in the container we're, we're putting them into the actual ground so they have all this room around them to spread out the roots but what happens is is they grow really well together there are five plants here they don't show any signs of struggling in fact they're growing at a tremendous speed and they're doing really well i have way higher success when i grow my cucumbers my zucchini my pumpkins my squash in a hill idea rather than an individual plant this is the success this is what you're seeing they work awesome the other thing is we continue to cover these with plastic you notice that they're on the tomato cage we literally cover the plastic we we literally take the plastic and cover the tomato cages there for covering the plants every single night until probably the till the end of july because the weather is so unpredictable and you'll see here there's some water pooling from this morning and all i do is is lift it up and we have freak rain freak frost high winds we do the plastic it's just a lifesaver so that's one hill there this is the other one again same thing the growth is just crazy and the next one so they're doing really really well really well so let's turn around here to the next row now this is the bean row now if you can see here when you first look at this row you're like holy man look at all those weeds and that is exactly it there is a lot of weeds here but if you look really close you'll see that the beans are just coming up right there you see that and what's typical with that is that it has this thick hook coming out of the ground so it doesn't look like some of these that are weeds okay and and that are speckled beans are really thick they're really distinct and easy to identify so that's what they look like when they just are starting to come and this row is just starting to germinate we have one row of beans that's a little bit ahead now you might ask well why is one row ahead of the other we planted them the exact same time it's because this row gets the morning sun first so the soil heats up so i'm going to show you different stages here which is really cool so in the other row they looked like this then they kind of come up a little higher and they look like this one then they pop out of the ground their leaves aren't all the way out but it's just about to lift up its its head then the following stage right here the leaves are up and you got a wonderful looking bean so those are the stages of the beans when they germinate and they are just beautiful i life it's just so beautiful to look at so that so the beans are coming up and you'll see them um, all over this row they're coming 
There's another one right there. So this part of the row is a little bit ahead. If we move further down, there's some more beans coming here and so forth. So the beans are just starting to sprout. So we, this is the bean row here. These two right here are the carrots. Now carrots can easily get mistaken for weeds. Now they just started germinating yesterday and those are all the boards that were covering the carrots. Now again, at first glance, if you're looking at what I'm seeing, all you're seeing is weeds and we got a lot of weeding to do, but there is carrot seed in here. Now carrot seed, what my kids like to call it, is really fine hairs. Okay, so if you look a little closer here, you see that right there? That's a carrot. That's a carrot. All these really fine and the and the false leaves that come out are really delicate in comparison to let's say this particular weed here or even this one right here. You see that? And the stem is is a um, reddish color and it's a little thicker. We're, carrots are really fine really really fine and they're a little bit lighter green they're almost like a neon green instead of this kind of darker green here you can kind of see the color differences so carrots and dill my dill isn't up yet but my dill will look like a carrot sprouting really fine really delicate sprouts so all around the row here you can see the carrots now these are long rows okay so I'm not gonna go all through the the two rows because they're really long but all the carrots are starting to sprout so the next two rows so these are the carrots right here the next two rows are red beets now depending on what kind of red beets you have sown will depend on what color the sprouts are so let me explain again you're looking here to the untrained eye, you see nothing but weeds. But take a look. Those right there are red beets. Okay, they kind of have um, a red, they have these particular ones have a red stem and the leaves have a reddish outline. These are red beets here. So we have red beets over here. Now, a really good example of something a little bit different is this guy right here. He's a different kind of red beet because we planted several different kinds. He's kind of got a more of a, I would say brownish, darker um, stem, but the leaves look the same, but they don't have that characteristic red on the edge. But they have this kind of satin look. They're also really long and you can kind of see that they're kind of more narrow and long. So that's a red beet there. Those ones are red beets and you kind of can see red beets germinating all over the place all the way down. So, okay the next row we're going to do is the peas and take a look you can just see them all over the place and I am blown away. When I did this video I said the seeds were three years old and I totally mistaken. I went back and oh my word, they are actually seven years old when the last time I grew this variety and I saved all my own seed. They're seven years old. So to have this germination at seven years old is absolutely awesome. Now peas are really distinct. When they come up, I tell the kids they kind of look like little asparagus plants, like the asparagus tops. Now these here have leaves coming already because they were the first ones to germinate. So they're already, already a little bit more mature, but they are very distinct. I mean, they look totally different. So peas and beans are really easy to tell between a, the plant and the weeds. They look totally different, but they're really cool. I love pea sprouts. I mean, they look awesome. So they're coming. This is one of my favorite varieties, and I'm definitely going to be saving seeds again because I planted everything out. So I'll show you guys how to save pea seeds. Really nice and simple. 
So the other the other thing we did with the peas is we actually tore the entire fence off. I'm just going to back up here for a second. We tore the whole fence. It used to be panels like over here, but we're switching this fence to the construction panels. So we're going to just I'm just going to force the peas to um, vine on that construction panel. Now, why did we do that? Why not just stay with the panels? Because we have our ram, our billy goat, and sometimes some weathers in here, and we really don't, we want a 100% proofed fence. And the construction panels are better with that. Okay, the other thing is in this area is the corn. I prayed over these corn be when the frost hit. I was so scared I was gonna lose every single one of my plants two days ago. My heart you sh was just beating fast. When I came outside, I panicked when, when I saw the white grass. I was, oh my goodness, I was just praying and praying and praying all morning that my plants weren't, weren't dead. Um, you can see a bit of damage but they survived thank you lord so so um you can see there's damage on on the leaves but but it's looking strong we are the we are june we are two days after the frost and they're doing really really good so i think the worst has passed um and uh, some plants have been harder hit, but overall I have lost none. So they're looking really well. They've grown really good. We've had fairly good weather, but we've also have, have had a lot of rain and a lot of hot sun. You know, if it's not raining, it's really hot. And when it is raining, it's really cool. So we haven't had that really nice middle ground weather. So, but thank God they're, they're okay. Okay, where else are we going? So we're going to head head over to the butternut squash and then we're going to come back here. So remember, the butternut squash had a really hard time germinating. I actually didn't think we would get any, but they were really, really tiny when we first planted them in and they have got new leaves. Their other leaves are grown bigger, so they're doing really well. And same with that little guy over there. He's doing really good. So this is a good location for them. I put the plastic in the background, which traps the heat. So when the sun comes this direction, the heat gets trapped. Plus it, it, it allows just a little bit of rain protection. I ran out of plastic and right now I can't even buy plastic in the city an hour away from us. There is no plastic to buy. They're out everywhere. So I just kind of set it up so it traps the heat. They have a nice little warmth area and they're really growing great. Okay, these are the ex two, this is one of the experiments. We have the cabbage underneath some fabric. Take a look. Wow, look how much they've grown. I, I was not worried about my cabbage with the frost. They have literally doubled in size. They are doing so good. And then take a look at the kale. Again, they have completely doubled in size since the last time we transplanted them. They're looking just absolutely beautiful. The nice thing that we found with this particular um, system is we can just water over. You don't have to open and close, open and close everything. And we can just water right over. I did make some changes though, which I'm gonna tell you about. I did bury in this side here. You notice that the fabric isn't sticking out just to proof it a little bit better with bugs. The other thing is, I've had to put rocks on the ends of all of these because I have six outside cats and they decided that these tunnels were fun game to play in. So I put rocks on the ends of all these to prevent the cats from growing in. The other thing is on the side where I, if I have to lift, I've also put boards again to secure it better so the bugs don't get in and the and the moths. So I've done that on both of them. So those are some of the adjustments that I've made. 
but otherwise everything is growing superb in these I mean really well and they are growing even better in here than they are in the other test just open so so that's interesting to note and then we have the zucchini holy man take a look at the zucchini again these guys have literally double to tripled in size to the point where I don't even need to plastic them and there's blossoms coming so they are looking really well again they're planted together there's multiple plants in each hole so they're doing absolutely fantastic they got touched by a little bit of frost but they will all pull through so so they they're they're doing good I mean take a look at this guy they've only been transplanted for about five days so it was kind of bad timing with the frost you know tr fresh transplanted in the garden and then frost hit so but all in all I'm looking at these plants and I'm going yeah you have some damage but the middle is still very green I'll lose some leaves but they're coming back in full force with the last little bit of really good weather so some of these didn't get hit as hard it is unbelievable how how the different heights of the garden here we've got a really dynamic um, area so so I, I'm happy they'll pull through and we'll still get tomatoes so I'm just going to show you some plants here these are the cherry tomatoes So they're looking pretty good you notice the yellow a bit on some of them again here but the ones that just opened up new leaves even within the the day they're nice and green so my plants are alive but they definitely got hit that particular day which is unfortunate but still very early in the season that it won't totally set us back okay so this is the test um, spot between the cabbage that is covered and the cabbage that is planted with marigolds so let's take a closer look they one they aren't near as far along out here but they are picking up at a very quick pace so which is good the marigolds are looking good I did lose one marigold and he looks so sad so out of I don't know how many 50 marigolds I transplanted look at this sad little guy he's like totally shriveling up it's so sad so I lost him but all the other marigolds are looking really good and same with the cabbage here I mean it's looking really good it's not as big as the ones under the fabric but they have definitely picked up and they're growing so everything looks good I see no insect damage so far on anything my eyes are always open looking for the flea beetle now if you don't know what the flea beetle is let me tell you it is called the flea beetle for a reason when you see let's say you have a leaf okay this is a looking a really beautiful leaf if it's if your leaf looks like you took a pin and you made a whole bunch of holes all over it perfect little holes then you got flea beetles and those suckers can eat and eat and eat and literally kill all your brand new germinated plants it's devastating so a trick that I do to deter the flea beetle is to grow horseradish about 30 feet away from your garden they love horseradish but they cannot kill it so it's like a it's like a trap so you grow the horseradish you let the flea beetles eat the horseradish but it doesn't affect the horseradish nor kill it but it keeps them away from your garden so I found that out by total accident and I have done this in several gardens and it works wonderful to keep the flea beetles at bay from the rest of your garden so that's a really cool thing all right so let's take a look at the dill here like I said 
the dill here has not sprouted it was one of the last things we planted so it's about five days behind the carrots so I actually don't expect this row to germinate for another four or five days but it'll come up looking like a carrot um, germinated on the other side look at these oh beautiful these are radishes and radishes look really distinct you can always tell radishes they got this beautiful um, shaped false leaves completely different than any kind of weed and they're coming up really really quick they came up three days after we planted them which is really typical for radishes they come up exceptionally quick so so we're gonna have some wonderful radishes in a couple of weeks here the other thing is down below here we have planted lettuce now lettuce looks like all these weeds seriously I'm right here you guys is a lettuce sprout right here but if you take a look that's a weed you see how close they are weed lettuce weed lettuce um, so you kind of got to really wait for its true leaves if you don't have the trained eye but this is lettuce here these are all uh, romaine so we'll have to thin them out but there is lettuce in this row I'm just gonna skip over to the next one here so we put marigolds in to this particular bed um, again a kind of experiment how far away can I plant my marigolds to, how close do I need to plant them to deter the slugs so we're just doing a few experiments in the garden this year this is lettuce coming um, this is where Grace accidentally spilt like half the package right here so the lettuce there is coming up really nice and strong um, and then and then it's scattered you know when you're planting with kids you got to expect I mean she accidentally dumped almost the whole package on this one spot and I just laughed I mean what, what else can you do um, she's she's just eight I mean it's so easy to spill a package so when your kids do something like that in the garden don't don't fret I mean it's only a few seeds so there's definitely some some lettuce coming here I don't see much happening here too too much um, so I'm not too sure whether that's because the seeds a bit older or whether it's just not up I know there's a few different varieties so I know for sure up here it's coming up so I'm not too sure what's happening with the rest yet so that's the garden area so I'm gonna walk out out of the garden and I'm gonna head to the herb bed that we just transplanted Okay, so this is the herb bed and some things are looking good and some things unfortunately aren't. This is the marjoram, absolutely gorgeous. It really picked up, it had a harder start but it's doing absolutely wonderful. So no worries there. That's a big sorrel plant. Some, some garlic here coming, some chives that are just about to blue. And then this is parsley, and the parsley is doing really good. It, it really came through the transplanting. But I'm concerned about the chamomile. The chamomile was suffering already in the pot be, before, because I was late. Then, then we got, it really suffered after the frost. So I'm surprised that the chamomile is suffering more than the marjoram is, but it is. So I don't know if it's going to make it, but I'm not giving up. There is green right here. There's a lot of yellow. The tops are turning that were already there, but the middle is green. You can see this is new growth. This is green. So what I'm hoping is that all the old leaves are just going to die off 
and from the middle I'm gonna come fresh and it's gonna come out with a vengeance so I'm just holding my breath because it did get hit some things are purplish on top that is not good color at all so I'm just hoping that like I said I see green coming right in the middle that it's just it got shocked you know it was in bad condition then we got really cold then it froze outside how much the frost did to it I don't know but it definitely did did some um, but I do see like on this guy look at there is new new green and when you look closely at it there is new green shoot so I think we'll be okay but right now it looks really sad this bed just wants to make me cry but I give it a couple of weeks and I think we're gonna turn around so so come on chamomile you can do it you can do it um, I cheer on my plants all the time so <laughs> Anyway, so though that's that's the update for this particular week. As a gardener, one of the most important things that you can do is just have patience with your plants. Sometimes your plants won't look good like your chamomile, but give them a few days and you will see some positive. Don't give up right away and call it a write-off. Even the tomatoes, yes, they are turning a bit yellow. Some don't look as good, but the new growth is coming out strong so it's just a matter of being patient make sure they're well watered and just and just watching them and waiting because they need some time to do their thing so all in all the garden is looking really good this year really really good this year the weather has been way more favorable than last year and the, everything's right on par with its growing so I'm really really happy with that after this for now as the as things are just growing I am going to just do weekly videos so I'll do an update once a week on all the plants and what they're doing and if I make any changes like I showed you today until we start harvesting um, and and um, doing maintenance right now we're weeding so we're simply waiting for the germination to happen let them get a little bigger then we're gonna go in there full force and start weeding and cleaning up the rows thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next video